Welcome back to In the Field Read, this time Hebrews chapter 12. Whereof seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourgeth. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourgeth every son whom he receives. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastens not? If ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seems good to be joyous. I read that wrong. Verse 11. Now no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you. Oh, sorry. Springing up. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for a morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no pleasure, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire. Verse 18. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness, and tempest, tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so, much a better touch, the mountain it shall be stoned, and if so, I read verse 20 wrong too, my apologies. Verse 20, For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned, or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, 
into an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaks. For if they escape not who refused him that speaks on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth? But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Thanks for being with us here in the field as I read, or try to read. Like I've said before, maybe by the time I'm through, I'll know how to read. Until next time, we have lots of links in the description. Give us a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. I don't mind dissenting opinions that are not obscene or unnecessarily crude. If you can articulate a dissenting opinion respectfully, I will happily let it slide through. I like debating. Well to a certain extent. You understand what I mean. So when next, until next time, if we don't see you here in the field, we'll see you in the kingdom.